chapter 1 verses 1 through 11 with all please stand it while we read these verses from the original King James text now after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun Moses' minister saying Moses my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Thou shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Thank you. You may be seated. Those verses in mind, perhaps other passages of scripture. Want to notice verse 11? This was spotlight verse. And it says, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. My dad used to always say, as we look at this text, I want to talk about preparing to move forward. All right, all right. Preparing to move forward. And my dad used to always say that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. And even Jesus himself, right before he left the earth to, to return to heaven, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And God says in his word that I have a plan and a purpose for you. I plan to build you up, to help you, all right. and not to hurt you. That's right. But it all comes down to being prepared. All right. God makes the promise, gives the vision, and supplies the power. But it does not work for us until we are prepared to go by faith and receive what God has promised. All right. All right. God is intent 
on completing his plan in the lives of his children. And this intentional leading is very evident in the account of Joshua and the children of Israel entering the promised land. You may remember they have been led for the last oh, uh, uh, for the last 40 years by Moses out of captivity from Egypt to the wilderness. They have been led from captivity and now they are at the part where they must now go and accomplish the conquest of the land. God has already promised it way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then he promised it to Moses and now he's reiterating that promise to Joshua. He could have just said, go in and the land is yours. But he, he, caused, he, he allowed them to be able to fight for the land. Which means that they had to move by faith against uh, some very, very trying obstacles that seemed to block them. You know, God could just give you or me the blessing, but it's better when he just promised it to us. And by faith, we move forward against all odds to accomplish that which God has already promised. Are, are, are y'all still with me? Yeah, man, Pastor. As the Lord desires to move churches and believers forward, he will begin to reveal important information, information that is vital to the successful start, continuance, and completion of his plan. He is able to bring to completion anything that he purposes to do with or without our cooperation. We must get ready as God begins to move in our lives we must immediately pay attention and then be prepared to follow. That's right. Yeah, you have to be listening for what God is saying and be prepared to follow God's instruction. We must faithfully follow his leading because no matter what we've gone through and endured, our greatest blessings are still yet ahead of us. There are some things we are must consider as we prepare to move forward. First of all, we must understand that it's God's plan for us. That's right. Yes, it's always God's plan, and the plan is for us. But you've got to keep in mind, especially when things start to go contrary, when the wheels start to fall off, that the plan is not your plan. All right. Or if the wheels are falling off, it's probably because you're trying to execute your plan. But the plan is always God's plan. Right. Look, at, right. look at this time for uh, Israel. Moses has died. And after the death of Moses, God wanted Joshua to know that his plan for Israel had not changed and that the time had come for Israel to get ready to move. He said, yes, you have mourned Moses, and, and I've given you time for that, but now it's time to move forward. Right. And I want you to know that God's people are always ever moving forward and upward. That's right. And when we start standing still, it's because we have parked in a no parking zone. All right. Yeah, but you have to be prepared to move. God doesn't allow his folk to just move willy-nilly. He has his folk prepared to go in the direction to claim that which God already has promised and delivered unto us. Yes, yes, even though many things had transpired since Israel's failure to believe God at Cadiz Brunel, his plan was still waiting to be accomplished. You do recall in Numbers 13, the failure of Israel when God told Moses, I want you to send out some spies. Go look at the land. See it. See that it's just as I promised it would be. It's a land that's flowing with milk and honey. Go ahead and look at it. I want you to see what I have promised to give unto you. Y'all know the, the, the spot, the spies when I 12 of them went out and they saw all the good things in the land just as God promised, but they also saw giants. They said, God told us about how big the grapes and all the fruit and everything was and how beautiful the land was flowing and making honey. But he didn't tell us about the giants. All right. He, he's told you that I can take you somewhere. In fact, I have purpose for you to be somewhere. I have something great for you to do. But he didn't tell you about the backstabbers. He didn't tell you about the haters. He didn't tell you about the folks who didn't want to see you where God is taking you. All right, 
Pastor. So you've got to understand, if you're going to get anywhere today in, in this troublesome world in which we're living, you've got to understand that the plan is God's plan. That's right. And, and God's plan he, it, is so much different than our plans. His ways are so much different than our ways. His ways are so much higher than our ways. He said, as far as heaven is from the earth, that's not far my ways, so I'm from your ways. That's right. But when you in his way, when you're doing his work, that's right. when you stand his will, and you trust his word, you don't have to worry about a thing. All right. So, so they, many things have happened, but God said his plan is still waiting. His plan for Mount Lebanon is still waiting to be accomplished. Many times after their departure from Egypt, Israel had attempted their own plans, but God remained, God's plan remained his will for his people. All right. You know, in times of trouble, we, we all pull together and everybody has an idea and everybody has a solution until you say, put your name by that solution. And it's always, well, that's what they want. That's what they say. I think y'all ain't gonna finish the church meeting. That's what they want. Right. That's what they say. This is what they say we ought to do. This is what we need to do. Well, then tell they to come in here and lead it. That's right. And then you can't find they are there. <laughs> because the plan is not their plan. It's not my plan. It's not your plan. It's God's plan. And his plan is his will for his children. As we consider this, we ought to remember that there are many plans we have about success, fulfillment, finances, and destinations. But when you think about these plans, these are usually based on our incomplete knowledge and understanding of God's plans and our needs. You see, we want what we want. That's right. But God knows what we need. What we need. God always has the plan, and the plan is based on his knowledge and his understanding. For the children of Israel, God's plan was to get them out of Egypt, where they had suffered some 400 years or more, and to have them to cross the wilderness into the promised land and then live in the promised land, experiencing God's blessings. That's what his plan for them was. For us, his plan is to, for us to leave our former life, our old life. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. His plan was to leave our old life uh -huh, and enter a new life, a life that is fruitful and a life that is experiencing God's Blessings. But we ought to always keep in mind that the plan is God's plan. God never leaves us to our own devices. Keep in mind that God has a plan for you. That's right. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're facing right now. All right. No matter what your plans are for the future. That's right. If it all fails, don't yeah. worry about it because God has a plan right. for, you. for you. Hallelujah, Lord. So many Christians and worldly people fail because we put our trust in the wrong things. We depend on human wisdom and human thinking and, and human understanding instead of trusting in God. Yeah, and I came by today to tell you if you base your success, your finances, your destiny on things and on people, no matter how well it makes you feel right now, how secure it makes you feel right now, ultimately if you place your hope and your future and your destination on anyone but the Lord Jesus Christ, it will eventually let you down. Hallelujah, Lord. When you in God's plan. You don't get too caught up about what's going on in world news today. CNN all right. and all the other things that are scaring folks to death today. Uh -huh. Living in constant fear because we still want to know what this person or that person's plan is. And won't even come to church. <laughs> won't even watch church on television or Facebook or YouTube 
for standing in front of TV all day, getting scared to death and trying to find out what this person's plan or that person's plan is. If that plan is not in line with God's plan, it has already failed you. All right. I'm sick of trying to watch television. All right. And hear folks lying about one another's plan. <laughs> I'm going, whose plan? I'm trusting. I know that's right. Back. And the plan is God's plan. And I've got good reason for trusting in Job because he has never failed me yet. So in having understanding the fact that the plan is not ours, but it's God's plan and it cannot fail, then we must also the best we can understand God's power. For wherever God lays out a plan, God also provides the power. When God gives us his plan for us, he also supplies the means or the power. It's right there in, in verse 5. He said, Joshua, listen to me. Thou shalt not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. He didn't say that there would be folks who would oppose you. He didn't say that there would be folks who would try to dig ditches for you. He didn't say that there would be folks who would jab you in the back. Folks who would try to bring you down. He said there would not be any man able to stand before you. He might try, but he won't be able to stand before you because no weapon falls against you will prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. He said, you see, Joshua, you're a good man. And Joshua's a good man because God declared him to be a good man. And we know that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. Oh, yeah. And even if he should fall, That's he right. shall not ever be cast out because God is able <laughs> to hold him yeah. with his right hand. Yeah. It is good to be a good man. That's right. A lot of great men have come and gone, but it's good to be a good man because when a good man falls, God is able to catch him and raise him back up. Yeah. So wherever his plan is, he also supplies the power. He says, as I was with Moses, you know what Moses did. He says, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Yes, yes, wherever he gives the plan, he supplies the power. So as we pursue God's plans, we must pursue them with the right power. Uh-huh. We need God's power not the power of our own personal opinions. That's what got Israel in trouble at Kadesh Barnea. God said it's there, the spies saw it, but they gave more attention to the giants in the promised land that God had already, that promised always with a capital P, a promised land that God has already promised his people. But when they saw the giants there, they focused more on the giants than on the promise of the Almighty God, and then they had a little meeting there, and they decided there were ten of us saying it's just too, it's too risky. There are too many giants, Anak and his folks are there. There is no way that we can overcome them, so let's have a vote. And they voted not to enter into the promised land. People opinion got involved. We don't always need the power of majority rule because they had a vote and voted ten to two. Not to go. Uh-huh. God plans do not work with the power of what the majority determines. God plans work only in the simplicity of his own power. In other words, if God says it, That's it. then you believe it, <laughs> or I believe it, that it. then that settles it. it. You see, there's always power behind God's plan. That's right. But in order for the power to work, then God's people must be prepared to move forward. So we can move forward today because we know that the plan that we are following is first of all God's plan. And we don't have to fear today because we know that God's plan is always supported by God's power. All right. But yet, we still must move by faith in order to receive the blessing. God had given Israel 
the land. All they had to do was step out on faith and claim it. And when God uh, makes a promise, it looks like it may be difficult to accomplish, but if you were to just step out uh, on faith, uh, God will uh, at the appropriate time uh, step in and make a way uh, out of nowhere. Uh, Israel should have been very familiar with God's plan uh, and God's power uh, when they were oppressed uh, and chased down uh, to the banks of the Red Sea uh, and there was trouble on the right hand and uh, trouble on the left and Pharaoh pursuing and this Red Sea in front of them uh, it took faith uh, for the first two priests uh, to step out and put their feet into the Red Sea uh, yeah. when they acted on faith uh, then they could claim the prize because of God's power because when they stepped, the first one stepped their feet out, the water raised up on both sides uh, and God allowed his people uh, to pass through on dry land uh, and God made a promise for well, you yeah, don't worry about what's going on on the left, uh, neither on the right uh, or what pursuing you from the past, uh, but be prepared uh, to move forward uh, by faith that God will uh, grant to you uh, just what he promised uh, do I have any witnesses uh, you got to hurry uh, and get out of your way uh, but first we must understand uh, moving into 2021 uh, there are a lot of things uh, that this country is facing uh, there are a lot of Thing that this whole world is facing. Uh, there are some difficult things uh, that this state is facing. Uh, and there are some trying times ahead uh, for this city right now. Uh, and the church uh, is supposed to be leading uh, the charge uh, into this uncharted territory. Uh, but the church has chosen uh, to go by their own plan. Uh, I don't know what's going on in folks' minds. Uh, I can only go by the evidence. Uh, I'm an analytic person. Uh, I like to see what the evidence says. Uh, and what the evidence reveals of my simple mind is and that the church has decided uh, we will just plan uh, on sitting back uh, and see what happens. Uh, when you sit back uh, to see what happens, uh, I stop by to tell you uh, nothing good happens uh, when you just sit back. Uh, what if David uh, had to just sit back? Uh, into the stand uh, blaspheme uh, against the army uh, of the almighty God. Uh, I got to get out of here. Uh, but the last thing uh, I want to drop on you today is uh, when we understand uh, that the plan uh, is God's plan, uh, when we understand uh, that the power uh, is God's power, uh, then we can go in uh, and understand uh, the prize uh, that God Until we understand it's God's plan and it's God's power and the prize is ours because God promised it and if God promised it, he will deliver. But yet and still, we must be prepared. And when you prepare, when God says move, you got to get up and get in a hurry and move. Come back to David now. What if he had done what we are doing today? I'm just going to sit back and wait and see how it comes out. But David said, I can't stand here. I'm not even in the army. But I can't stand here and listen to those Philistines and that giant Goliath blaspheme against the power and the plan of Almighty God. I'll go down there and face him. And then Saul, he remind me of the politics today. Because since you're going, David, let me help you prepare. Take my armor and put it on and go down. Prepare yourself to meet the giant. David put on the king's armor. And he recognized this is earthly armor. This will worry it down. Thank you. 
the days ahead. Yes, Lord. When we go forth from this place in faith and never in fear. Yes, Lord. Forward forever. Forward forever. And backwards never. Yes. We move forth in your name by the power of your spirit. Pray that you bless this congregation, all who love the name and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Prepare our hearts, Lord. Prepare our hearts. To receive the prize. Yes, Lord. That is a part of your plan. Thank you, Jesus. And supplied by your power. Yes, Lord. Give us that prize, Lord. Give it to us, Lord. Eternal life. Yes. We're with you. Bless our children. Bless, bless our sinners. Bless everybody. Bless everybody. On the body of Christ. Shield us and help us in these dark and difficult days. Continue to lead and depend on and trust in you. For I know that you will fix it after a while. So we thank you. Thank you. For things being just as well as they are. Yes. We thank you for the Christmas season. Yes. And the Christmas Christ. Right. May his spirit fill each and every one of us. May he indwell us and empower us to do your will. And we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. For it truly belongs to you. I prepare us, Lord, to keep our part of your plan and your purpose for this ministry. For the lives that and soul that will be saved because of what you're doing here. Yes, we give you honor. We give you, we give you glory. Yes. We give you praise. Yes, Lord. And so to stay focused and fight on in the very precious name of Jesus. And fight on until that day. It, it be your time to call and our time to answer. Yes, and we'll be prepared to hear those welcome words. Serving of God. Serving of God. Well done. Well done. Now rest <laughs> from your love and employment. For the battle is fought and the victory is won. Enter the master's joy. Come on up, servant. You've been faithful over the people. Come on up a little bit higher. I'm going to make you rule over me. Do it for us, Lord. Be so glad and careful to see that you get all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for it surely long to you. Now, may we ask only thank you in the very precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How may the grace of our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of God with each of us henceforth now forever in the very and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest ruling about each of us henceforth now forever. Let every heart say, Amen. Oh, the words of Joshua and for me. And for me, and my house, and my house.